Hi, my name is Connor. I'm a robotics engineer here at Flexiv, and today I'm going to show you how to get started using our robotic development kit, or RDK. The RDK is a software development kit that's compatible with every Flexiv robot. In general, for each of our robots, we provide two main ways to program the robot. The first is to use Flexive Elements, which is a drag and drop programming interface that comes pre installed on the Teach Pendant that we supply with every robot system. The second is the RDK, which, as mentioned, is a software development kit. So, for anyone out there who has some Python or C experience, this will provide a familiar and powerful interface that you can use to program our robots. So, whether you're an academic researcher and you need real time, low level access to be able to test out an algorithm, or you're working in industry and you have some software development experience and you're more comfortable working with an API than a drag and drop interface, the RDK is for you. So in this four part series, we'll start by going through the hardware setup together, then we'll set up the software environment, then we'll compile the RDK library itself, and lastly, we'll just do a quick test run to make sure that everything's working the way that we expect. In this first video, we'll be using a Ryzen 4 which is a 7 degree of freedom adaptive robot with state of the art built in force control technology and a 4 kilogram payload. We've already gone through some of the basic setup and installation steps, so at this point, we'll just focus on the steps that are required specifically to get started using the RDK. The earlier steps are laid out in our quick start guide, and that includes pairing the teach pendant with the robot itself, so at this point, we can use the teach pendant to configure the robot to work with RDK. Using the Teach Pendant, we can go ahead and open up Flexive Elements. And the first thing that we'll want to do is to enable the RDK server on the robot. To do this, we can click on the Settings icon in the bottom right, and then select Remote Mode. And then we can switch the toggle in the top left to Enable Remote Mode. And then from the drop down in the top right, we can select RDK for the mode. Then we can hit Save, then OK then OK again to confirm our changes, and hit the back button in the top left to return to the settings menu. At this point, these changes will take effect as soon as we reboot the robot. But this is also the right time to provide tool configuration information for any end of arm tooling that we may want to use with the robot. To do so, we can click the tool icon from the settings menu, then tool list on the left hand side, and if we've already configured the tool, we can simply select it from the list or we can hit the plus sign in the top left to add new tool information. For this video, we won't be using any end of arm tooling, so I'll go ahead and discard these changes. So at this point, we're ready to go ahead and power off the robot, but we'll wait just a minute before powering it back on so we can make a couple of other changes. So I'll go ahead and switch the power off on the control box for the robot. Next, you'll want to use an Ethernet cable to connect the Ethernet port on your computer to any of the LAN ports on the robot's control box. With the system still powered off, slide the mode switch on the motion bar into the upper position, representing auto mode. Next, verify that the e-stop is pressed down, meaning that it's engaged. Now we can switch the power on again and wait for the robot to fully boot. Now the connection between the robot and our computer should already be established. So I can verify this on my computer by opening up a new terminal window and pinging the robot at its default IP address 192.168.2.100. And here I can see that I'm getting a response, so I verified that the connection was successful. So I'll go ahead and quit that. And then the last thing to do is to go into the network settings and identify the wired connection between our computer and the robot, and then check the IPv4 address, which has been automatically assigned by the robot. Note this down, as we'll use it again in just a little bit. In the next video, we'll show you how to set up the software environment you'll need to use the RDK.